the madman. Welcome to Rogue Day. Today, a lot of rogue cards were revealed and pretty much all of them have something to do with secrets. We'll do a quick preview of all the secret lovers. Private Eye, which for four mana casts two secrets potentially. You got the Legendary, four mana five four, which uh, goes infinite with secrets, never dies. You've already seen the Ghastly Gravedigger, three mana four three, hand disruption. Now the question is, do the secret lovers justify putting the secrets in your deck? Which is to say, are the secrets good enough or are they so bad that you can't justify running those obviously strong cards. Well, now this is what I'd call a... Sticky situation. Two mana rogue secret. After your opponent casts a spell, summon a 3-4 spider with stealth. Hey, it's Catrick! Except it's rogue now. Uh, you have a 3-4 spider instead of a 4-2. Uh, Catrick! was considered a pretty good secret, and this is an example of a secret that I made it so that if you had good secret lovers, you could justify running the secrets. Uh, Catrick was run in a meta where you actually had decks which didn't run very many spells, and we have significantly more spells in the metas right now. So that's a 2-mana 3-4. Uh, the 3-4 might be a little bit delayed, but still 2-mana 3-4. And if you are casting these secrets for free, if you have some sort of discount, if uh, these cards empower other cards, I could certainly see this card being good. This seems like it's probably one of the best of the three secrets revealed here. And is certainly not a trash secret, unlike the Paladin secrets, where even the Paladin secrets saw play when you had good enough secret lovers. Like, this is a solid card. And, you know, when we talk about the secret lovers uh, and how good they are with the secrets, you know, it, it seems like it could really be a legitimate deck. Next up is Kidnap, Rogue 2-mana secret. After your opponent plays a minion, stuff it in a 0-4 sack. Now, there's a lot of uh, question marks about this, but I will fully explain it. So, they play the minion, their battle cry goes off, their minion gets stuffed into a sack, the sack is put onto your side of the board. When the sack dies, the minion is returned to the opponent's hand. That's if the uh, sack, of course, dies. If you bounce the sack, uh, if you silence the sack, that kidnapped person, well, they don't get the minion back. I imagine, by the way, uh, if your board is full, uh, you do not kidnap the opponent's minion because you can't fit him in the sack. Sure, there are some cards that you uh, don't really want to kidnap. For example, uh, cards with really good battle cries. Uh, there are a number of those, so. Too many to list. Uh, there's also cards that you wouldn't want to freezing trap, you know, usually the battle cries, but also cheap minions, token minions, low cost minions. And this is a card that probably is on the weaker side of the secrets, but if uh, stalling out the opponent's minion plays seems useful, you know, this is a, this is a tool. And the third secret revealed, uh, note that this one was kind of side leaked uh, and then it had to go through an unofficial translation so the card is not actually called betrayal of betrayal uh, the card is double cross two mana rogue secret if your opponent spent all their mana draw two cards well anyone who's played hearthstone knows that this this game is meant to be played on a curve that's actually a very easy condition to fulfill on like anything that's not an end game top deck uh, Basically, if you get this anywhere in the early game, it is a two-man draw two. And if the game goes long, like, eventually, they're probably going to spend all their mana on some turn. So, at the end of the day, the rogue secrets are, to recap, two mana draw two, but maybe a little bit delayed. Two mana summon a three four, but maybe a little bit delayed. And two mana ice trap, but not really. Ice traps like kidnap. It's a pre-sap, ba dum bum Okay, now let's take a look at the secret lovers. Uh, the reasons why you'd want to play these secrets, which, you know, they're probably not good enough to actually just see play as cards you want to put into your deck, unless you had the secret lovers. And we'll start it off strong with Private Eye. Four mana, three, four. Balakrai, cast a secret from your deck. Combo, cast two instead. 
So why would you run these secrets, which are, you know, solid, not great, not bad. Well, the answer is because this card can legitimately be compared with a 4-mana 6-8 that just draws 2. I mean, that's good. That's good. That's undeniably good. This is comparable with Bellringer Sentry, which rang in the Paladin Secret Archetype. You've got Halk Kias, 4-mana 5-4. Legendary, Death Rattle, if you control a secret, store Halkias' soul inside of it. It resummons Halkias when triggered. Uh, so this is a little bit interesting in that you don't actually have to have a rogue secret. You could store this in a mage secret. If you uh, discover a secret from another class, a sketchy stranger. Ultimately, this does look a little bit on the weak side because uh, it needs to be on the board while you've got a secret that hasn't been triggered, so the opponent could just trigger your secret and then cal kill Halkias, in which case you have played a 4-mana 5-4, which is not terrible, but is pretty bad. 4-mana 5-4, not great. I would imagine the soul would be stored in the uh, first secret you played, so if you have multiple secrets out, then Halkias would more likely uh, have his soul stored, but again, I don't think it matters that much. I think if you control a secret on death is a pretty tough condition to uh, pull off. So yeah, I, I don't really see this Halkias thing working out. Where the secret love really works out well, I'd say, is this Ghastly Gravedigger card, which we've seen already, but just bringing her up again since we've seen all this stuff now. Three mana, four, three, you know, the battle cry, if you control a secret, choose a card in your opponent's hand to shuffle into their deck. So even better than three mana, four, three, draw a card. It's 3 mana 4 3, make the opponent discard a card. Like, not permanently. It throws it back into their deck, but better than just like a random one, you choose the card. You see their hand. You see three cards in the opponent's hand. And then you get to toss the card that's super, uh, you know, dangerous coming up. It's all the same uh, reasons as why I made a full video on Theotar the Mad Duke. This is some serious hand disruption. But yeah, you could also just play the secret on turn two. Turn three, play Ghastly Gravedigger. Uh, if your secret triggered that fast, you're pretty happy as well. Then you don't play Ghastly Gravedigger, you wait on it. So yeah, really cool stuff. The secret package in Rogue uh, looks solid. It would seem like it would be best in a meta where Ghastly Gravedigger would be like the key card uh, on the key reason why this package would be good. It's only a, at most, 10 card package, I'd say. You run six secrets, you run Private Eye, uh, Ghastly Gravedigger. Maybe you uh, throw in the Sketchy Stranger, maybe you don't. So I guess 12, uh, at most. Maybe you don't run two Kidnap. Could you have this 11-ish card package Combine with the play a lot of cards in a turn package. Mm, I don't know about that. Could you combine this with a pirate package? Interesting stuff. We'll see.